will try to um, if we get the stream up, then I will try to monitor the questions there. Um, for our Q&A session afterwards, uh, we will have um, some time for discussion uh, with Lee Juan, and I will um, uh, use this space to prioritize our senior research forum students first, and then we will move on to uh, wider questions. Uh, and then if it is possible, I will take some from, from YouTube. So hi, Mom. Uh, I've always wanted to do that. Um, she's not really awake and watching because it's 3 a.m. in Vancouver, but nevertheless. Uh, so this morning, I'm very pleased to welcome my colleague, Dr. Lee Juan Chang who is a senior lecturer in the Department of Music. Um, Li Juan is going to give us a presentation this morning called Hip Hop in China and its Multidimensional Narratives. Uh, she is also the recipient of a recent ERC five-year um, research program called eCora. Is that right? Do I have that right? Yeah. Um, so we are very delighted. Please join me in welcoming my colleague, Li Juan Cheng. <laughs> Thank you for coming to listen to my talk about hip hop in China and its multi-dimensional narratives. China is a large state where a centralized state-controlled media industry has increasingly evolved into a highly commercialized system with international reach. The workings of a Western Marxist hybrid system have resulted in the rise of many social, <coughs> localized and innovative narratives from hip-hop performance, their audiences, and the media agencies in the field. Listening to these narratives provide a multivocal way of understanding the deep realities of contemporary China. The history of hip hop in China could be dated back to the 1980s. This was the same time that hip hop was starting to become a hit in America. The difference though, was that in China, hip hop was popularized by the Chinese diaspora. There were only a few Chinese hip hop artists in the period before the 1990s. Hip hop took off during the 1990s due to the circulation of darko tapes and CDs in the underground market in major Chinese cities such as Guangzhou, Shanghai, and Beijing. It should be noted that before Chinese hip-hop came to be defined as the term xi ha, it was called shuo chang. Shuo chang literally translated as speaking, singing, which rooted a Chinese ancient form of song storytelling. During the early 2000s, hip hop culture also developed in the form of rap battles that were held in several underground bars in Shanghai and Beijing. After that, a, a new forms of Chinese rap, which was more suited to social media, got the public attention. For instance, one of the best known hip hop movement is now Sichuanese Trap, a subgenre that celebrates the region's unique pronunciations and is promoted by music videos with relatively high production values. The golden age of hip hop in China was brought by a TV music talent show called The Rap of China. It broke into the mainstream by more than 2.6 billion online views on its 12 episodes. To a large extent, Chinese television created the first program to be entirely dedicated to the genre when Chinese online video company iQiyi broadcasted the first season of the Rap of China in June 2017. During the breakdown period, top groups were charging as much as 77,000 US dollar a performance. Apart from those popular music programs which also attracted the participation of hip hop performance, 
There were three major hip hop programs in China so far. They are Zhong Guo Yu Xi Ha, called the Rap of China. Second, Shuo Chang Xin Shi Dai, called the Rap of Youth. And Zhong Guo Shuo Chang Dian Feng Dui Jue, also called the Rap of China. These three programs were produced by ITE. Bilibili and ITE again. In 2000, start from 2017, 2020, 20, sorry, the second one should be 2020, I made a mistake, and the third one 2022. <laughs> the booming time of hip hop among the public was slowed down by the birth of a scandal of two top-level hip-hop performers, PG-1 and the Guy. They were both winners of the TV program the, the Rap of China in 2017. PG-1 had been related to an online rumors accusing him of having an extramarital relationship with a famous actress and even more seriously, the use of a drug. Then, in the next week, the official censors also came to heavily on Guy. However, it is not long for Guy to escape from the state restriction from mainstream media because Guy had given the Chinese authorities a guarantee of good behavior by some a propaganda song, Long Life My Motherland, for the audience in the most influential official TV party program. The restriction of these two hip hop performers, PG1 and the guy, and their different treatment by the government officers shows clearly how indiscriminately censorship is applied as well as its inconsistency. For instance, Mac Haddock, a Taiwanese hip-hop performer, was banned from Chinese airwaves in 2015, which was followed by his reappearance on TV program in 2017. In two, January 2018, the Communist Party authorities took the sudden and unexpected decision to prohibit TV stations from featuring any representative of hip-hop culture in their shows. This state-led hip-hop crackdown has smashed the hopes of a defined music genre taking root in China, as those hip-hop works with the lyrics deemed questionable are stripped from streaming services. Even meanwhile, those socialist hip-hop were still receiving government support. One of the consequences of state restriction is that self-censorship has been calculated, cultivated in the lives of Chinese artists. Most hip-hop performers avoid singing and using lyrics that are openly critical of the Chinese communist state. Sila suggests that in China, hip-hop culture often took roots in marginalized communities that lack representation in political and popular culture and becomes a voice of protest. However, it is noticeable that this protest is often subtle and does not always take open forms. For this to happen, it often takes lots of courage and significant craftsmanship that reveals how singers can use words in ways that duty propose opposing ideas and then emerge with a message that only a sharp eye can discern. Quote from Ken, 2000. Oh, nine. After a short re review on the history of hip-hop in China and its changing relationship with China's 
state policy times by time. I will give some examples which cover multidimensional narratives from hip hop performance, including those from underground, female, brotherhood, regional, and ethnic representatives. These examples will address the issues of multiple identities, <coughs> linguistic characteristics, gender awarenesses, as well as the articulation of youth. This is the first example, multi-identities of overseas Chinese. Okay, originally I designed to see the words uh, shadow in yellow. I can use pinpoint to, to show off when, to show when um, the video is on, but now I couldn't find the, the, yeah, I couldn't find the menu on, on this device. It's fine, Let, let's listen. I tried earlier, it's funny or not? Yeah, but it's, 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 Oh, so once in this, they couldn't make them out. It's bad. So each time I escape from there. Back in China, rapping fire, ask your rap, who's that's a higher? He who lacks the best, reply, and when I track him, that's a liar. Ripping the mic whenever I speak, you know that Asian sign. So it's only right I hit you with these lines, my native tongue. Come on, y'all can't copy, like my auntie, boy, damn. Yeah, take it, lady, get killed, I'm gonna know you can see. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Check out my dear, boy, I'm gonna be seen, boy, you. Okay. Okay, so this video um did you find out three language he used? Um <coughs> English, Cantonese and uh, Mandarin Chinese. So here we So each time I need to in and out again or something I, I don't, yeah, I I don't think it'll play next. from inside. You'll have to escape. Okay, okay, got it. Um, okay, I got it here, then I next. Oh. Okay, so this time it's successful, that's great. Um okay, so here Oh Yang Jin called Mike Jin. Uh he is American Cantonese. He already was established uh, hip hop. Uh, Grief, do you know him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in two thousand ten, he joined the uh, the rap of China. That time with the mosque, they call hip hop man. He called himself hip hop man. But uh, the situation that time, his English is super, and uh, Cantonese is his mother tongue. 
So earlier, when uh, uh, you see there is the words show the shadow, the rhyme actually that's in Cantonese. Um, but the meanwhile, you know, the hip hop in Ch uh, the rap of China is a, a kind of market mainly faced the people speak Mandarin. So that time his Mandarin is okayish, but they're not very good. So earlier you see the in that performance, only five percent, literally last sentence is Mandarin Chinese, otherwise all English or Cantonese. But the meanwhile, he still want to join the big market of the mainland China. <clears throat> so another example from ethnic minority member is also show off his multi-identities in the performance. <laughs> in 2017 as well. So from this piece, we will see um, he used the rhyming. Later I will give you an example, that's in um, Tibetan language. And he used the multiple language and show a bit pan Asia identities. And also he contrasted between the rap and the musical melodies, make that kind of contrast. And it's very uh, syncretic and uh, hybrid style. Uh, actually, because the rap is so difficult, that's in Tibetan language, that time I was in China, so I find a, a young girl, she's from Tibetan, and uh, she asked her brother to transcribe the rap for me and uh, record it. Uh, I asked him to do very slowly so I can catch the uh, uh, the rhyme. That's the first one. That's the first one. That's the first one. Okay, I won't do all, otherwise I have not enough time. And just the awkward thing is when I try to transcribe the pronunciation myself, I use the Chinese pinyin. So if the scholar from other country maybe use their own language, so it's always you bring your own print on someone else. But that's all what I can do myself at the moment. Okay, that's the third example. I want to show um, the hip hop performance from the regional area, how they want to show their original identity and their beautiful tones and pronunciations. I transcribe the language myself, maybe not perfect English, but uh, still something. Okay. 
要越红越傲，像在天气不太阳见烈日与路上有时都要拐过来求。不知道我无数做的太监，身体冷漠漠，我继续在前。那这样下去真的非常危险，天干不燥，不小心握住，哎，人生漫长，我却已好身走路。我的歌摆在那儿吗？他们有的东西我都有，但我有的东西他们都没有。That's the performer from the same group. They are from the same brand. Let's。Okay, they both say this is the Frog City. Frog City is a city called Chongqing in China. And they are bred called Gosh, G-O-S-H. That's why they are G-O-S-H, Gosh. And so I put these two performers together because they are, you can find the similarities like they are very confident. They say, well, um, when people have some ability, I have it. But uh, the ability I have, other people don't have it. So that, that's kind of, I'm just the best. And uh, the second uh, performer, when that time I asked him about the ranking, he was saying, well, my brother is the first one, and I'm the second one. And the third one, I don't care. So that sort of was quite interesting. They had kind of brotherhood. And the third one we call Jianghu Flow. But basically, you are in the society, that kind of rule how you behave in the society. And then they want to show their original identity, include their dialect, dialects and the tongues and the musical. Like uh, the first one say, um, 人生, if like Chinese will say, Mandarin will say, 人生漫长, uh, 小心走路, something like that. And, but they will say, 人生漫长, 要小心走路, it kind of includes their kind of strong local dialects into the um, into the hip hop performance to show the kind of regional identities. <laughs> okay, the third one from the group. Uh, this is the yeah. This is the third group. I try to address the the gender issue. So from the female rappers, I will mainly want to suggesting their style in Westernization and the feminism because. That's the that's the character I can find in the top female rappers at the moment, but I might may, may miss the song. <laughs> I'm not 
Many times, I just couldn't find、uh, some character.、Um, people already focus a lot、uh, or talked a lot in,、uh, in their <coughs> work or presentation or articles.、Um, but still, I need to give some example from the female rappers in China at the moment. So, from this specific piece, because online I saw some people. Feel like or misunderstood、uh, Liu Boxin as a South Korea from South Korea because her style is already quite similar to the style of the South Korea. So some comments will say no, actually she's from China. So sometimes like the Asia between the 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 kind of style, sometimes you couldn't directly tell, and、uh, there is some female singers. In they are popular in the Chinese、um, popular music landscape. They are actually got the training from South Korea in a few years. So it's kind of they are very like international and more like the、uh, Western styles, the Asian style and the Chinese style. So it's kind of step by step. And、uh, but you will see her English pronunciation is very very good. And you see the language between the Chinese one sentence, another English sentence, and the Chinese sentence again. Like, if, if you like acoustically, if you don't watch or you don't understand, you just musically feel it's quite smooth, smooth connected. And I'll give an example from another female rapper called Wan Nida. I don't care who you be. You wanna follow my path? Better don't mess with me. I don't know who you are. I don't care who you be. You wanna follow my path? Actually, that's part of the song because singing and the rap they mixed、uh, together. For Wan Nida, she's very popular in China because she's a kind of very queenish. Like,、uh, you know, in the video, a man just on the floor and、uh, he got a stick like that、so、to feel he's on the top of that man. And、uh, she's also again very international from my understanding of their popular music style, apart from some Chinese language words.、Um, yeah. Then I come to the articulation from the youth.、Um, yeah. Let's listen to the song first. 
It's the theme song in the film Wu Kong's biography composed and the song by Hua Chen Yu and lyrics by Sun Yu. The main idea you can see the some parts of the lyrics, the young and the wild don't want to live in vain, who will give give me something to believe in? What's fate? I say fate is determined by the heart. And so musically, it feel like a quite drama-like narrative. And two big parts of rap, I mean, that's the overall, because I only give some parts of the, the song, were creatively harmonized with the Buddhism chant in the bass line. Earlier you all hear the, you heard the sound, actually, the sound effect not very good here. Uh, no, it's my computer. And the Buddhism chant, but uh, if you find the online video, you will hear the the, the layer is quite a few layers that feel like that kind of feel like the the battlefield, and also they kind of transit it too and the contrast with singing melodies in slow and high pitch. So it's kind of then again. So it's kind of contrast. The issue, the song, I feel it's mainly want to express their longing for freedom, stand up to unjust authority, the loose of belief, and the importance of self-direction. I also give example, this is quite good example, I feel like I have to share with you, is about address the campus violence. And this one, I saw some American talent or that, that kind of program, lots of like young kids in the teenager, they say something about themselves, about campus bulletin or violence. But this actually is from 20 something uh, young people, but not that young, not a, less, not a teenager. They observe what happened or maybe happened on the before or when they heard on the story. Um, I try to, because the translation is so difficult when it's put out so fast, so I just give you a bit of idea about what they're talking about. <coughs> okay, I will practice my Chinese rap. Mm-hmm. 
。啊，这条鱼像像个屏障，观其这只惊慌失措，待不得高摇，下个拐角几步之遥，我看到了它正在向靠近我肩膀，钟表指向九点零响，它加快了脚步，突然向我奔跑，我转过身，露出了微笑，在下一秒露出了肩雨伞里的尖端。刺激他的心脏，来回重复作响。他眼睛都惊慌，像对我的包讲，衣服被我弄脏。妈妈打来电话 ，I don't care， 反正没有人会在乎。他这才把我的书包给弄散落，心爱的笔记本掉在了地上。为何总是让我不停受伤？明天之后也是这样，期待着下雨天。OK <笑>。<笑> uh, then make a comparison with the real rapper. <laughs> 
uh, inspiration and enjoyment or sadness, whatever the thing I can feel. And I'm happy to get any questions. If, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I, I missed the last sentence, what you said. So, the, has uh, the state control media and, and uh, the fact that, you know, you have to be careful what you say, has that led to more of an underground subculture in hip-hop in China? Actually, I think people have different ideas because, you know, uh, like if you think about the cat and the mice, or like my son always say, my mom is looks quite, uh, and, I mean, quite cruel, but actually she's just a bit shouty. But, you know, she's just a shouty. So, you know, she's still quite tolerant. So it's, I mean, people carefully to, um, I think people always careful, but when they have a chance, they will enjoy themselves. And, uh, but uh, they are ready to, because, you know, the hip hop is it's mainly the, the lyrics, but the lyrics you can change all the time. Like uh, one guy and uh, called TCZ, um, before the 2018, when the Chinese government uh, had some regulation out, he had a hip hop call, I want to have sex with my girl or something. But after the regulation on, say, I want to play with my kids in my house. So I mean, just quickly online, you know, delete and upload something. So, you know, uh, you just need to be careful, I think, but you're doing what you want. That's, that's my own observation. Yeah. Especially, I mean, for people not, uh, not uh, spotted by the Chinese government or not uh, like blacklisted in the Chinese government, then I think they are mostly fine. They just be careful. But people already watched, then you should be very, 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 very careful, I think. Yeah. Imagine like uh, like uh, take a drug or something. Of course, for the most of culture, parents not allow their kids to, right? So that's kind of you can find the similarity. But uh, for the language part, you see, lots of the Chinese rappers they flew from English and the Chinese and their local dialects. That sort of transition I didn't see very many cases from other countries, especially the English dominant country. So that's the thing I feel like uh, that's uh, quite outstanding. And uh, also, the, in Chinese popular music in general, the lyrics, the meaning, or the meaning behind the meaning, that kind of metaphors in the lyrics, always very, very important. So the melody can be simple, that's no problem. But the, the lyrics must be very, very carry a lot of like meaning. So when you rap it, when you don't, you try to ignore the melody part, then really like you will pay more attention on what they want to say. So this is the part I, I didn't say, and uh, the lyrics from the popular music from other countries, that's not that meaningful. Of course, I didn't say that. but. Uh, uh, lots of Chinese popular music uh, person or critic, they proud of the same way we, we, we really focus on, try very, very hard to make very, very good lyrics. Yeah. 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 Ye
So that, that's the thing, what I saw. And also the Chinese language, we have lots of the local dialects. And we have different tones. Like Cantonese, they have eight tones. Uh, like the earlier, the, the Mac G had eight tones. So that, that tone is also incorporated into the rap. I think that's quite different from um, some language, like English language, they have no tones, right? Am I right? Uh, I mean, they focus on something else, but, but, the, but the, I mean, just to say the unique in, in China. Uh, is that, uh, I heard about the Indian language have different, lots of tones, right? So if I can find a scholar from India, maybe he can share me how they use the rap with their own language. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You, you, you think about, uh, are you questioning about the, or have question about the eco economic situation of the hip hop uh, market, or is that what you what you asked? Or no, I, I mean like, do do, do the government uh, incentivize uh, financially the hip hop in China? They have problems to put money in Chinese hip hop. Is something sponsored by the government or no? And well, they have lots of way to make money, especially now the social media, you know, when social media, basically, even you do nothing, I just face the camera, then I do something that lots of the fans just like, like that every like actor had the money, and they got a red package that has money and the flower, they can change into money, all that sort of thing, as long as you, you are popular, you got attention. Of course, if like some like government sponsored, uh, the, the TV program, they have also like a channel, and if underground uh, hip hop, they never had a chance to rapper, they have never had a chance to perform in that kind of channels. So it's, it's really, really depends. I think uh, people need to have good enough skill. Either you have good uh, hip hop rapper skill, or you know how to attract uh, people, or you have very good relationship with government and you, you, I mean, the government is not silly actually. Chinese government always find someone already had a bit kind of uh, reputation among the people. Then they try to drag them into the direction they want you yeah. to close to. So, I mean, as long as you have some supporters, fans or government, whatever you say, to mention that they, they will be okay with, with the money, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, I saw this hand first, and then we'll go yeah. to you, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that all right? program I saw so far, it seems like uh, they had a very good relationship, collaboration with the rapper from Taiwan. I saw quite a few from Taiwan. The Hong Kong, the only one I saw is uh, actually, he, she, she's a popular music singer, and, but she also can do some rapping, basically. Then she was invited as the judge of the program, The Rap of China, in 2019, probably. 
and uh, so for the underground or in the bar or something actually performed like a live performance about Hong Kong, uh, I I don't know. I will maybe find the time to 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 search online. But myself, like uh, the the channel, I can I can get the observe the musicians. They fall mm -hmm. into this channel. And uh, among them, I didn't see very many Hong Kong rappers. Yeah, that that's the that's the answer I can give you right now. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, I think we have a really interesting um, um, musician. So I don't know, could, could we make hip hop into some modern uh, musicals? Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's impressive for me. Uh, the rapper um, uh, about the uh, violence, violence, the school violence. Yeah. So I, I think um, it is uh, very jumpy. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's all, also it's a, 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 it's a, a song, uh, but um, uh, and, uh, um, in in terms of the theater uh, performance, even a musical. Yeah, actually, the, the this this rapper called Shen Dai, he's he's very smart for. I incorporate like a stage performance into the, the, the not only the rap performance. So, yeah, but I didn't see very many. The, this program called the Rap of Youth, I mean, sometimes not only the performer themselves, of course they have this character, but sometimes the, the program, they also want to attract uh, the audience. So they actually set up some requirement or lots of the producer assistants, they help them to make that kind of idea. So for I remember that program, they have lots of lots of the and uh, the performance. Actually, they they quite stage performance and the drama like thing they put together, even dressed up or something. Yeah, for that pro program especially. So you can pay attention. That's from Billy Billy that that that. Website, yeah. Um, John, do we have any questions from YouTube? No, okay. Uh, yeah, Griff. Thank you, Dijon. Um, I am, of course, especially interested in the, um, those questions about the, the metaphor and um, you know, the nuance that we talked about in terms of managing and self censoring, which, um, you know, of course, like so Gustavo and Yana. Cypher team, that word cypher has a few different meanings, but one of them is sort of um, in cypher knowledge, so secret meanings. And um, it might be interesting if we continue this work to look at the, you know, hip hop takes us one of its, well, it goes back to the blues, blues metaphor, but then even before that, sort of slave spirituals metaphors, the ways that African Americans had to navigate uh, surveillance. who looks at the Stasi records when hip-hop hit East Germany. And he's, he's looking at um, these artists, uh, the Stasi reports about um, informing on, it. now is this good left-wing music or is this capitalist um, material wealth uh, mm. stuff? And um, trying to decide what is what. Um, it's, so that's sort of the comment. And my question is, um, what does that look like in terms of, I was always going to ask the question right where you ended, the um, being proud to be read. Are there good examples of um, hip hop artists? Like there are a lot of communist hip hop artists from, from New York City, from Cuba, from Venezuela, etc., who are very um, socialist or, or far left. Um, are there examples, and and within those examples, are there are there um, ones who artists who push the communist government to be more true to its anti-capitalist claims? Does that make sense? 
Yeah, I, I think I got what you meant. Like, are, are there nuanced ways that left-wing rappers say, now, now the government is turning too far to the capitalists? Because in China, we actually have no really like two parties you can say left wing or something. So based on that, it's quite difficult to answer your question. Of course, we have like a very, I feel at the moment, in China, generally speaking, I feel at the moment the Communist Party the office, they are very left. And uh, some people from like uh, general people, not very good education background, they are quite left. And the intellectual group, they are quite right. So th that's what I feel in China, generally speaking. I mean, not always that, but uh, generally speaking, is like that. And uh, I think the hip hop, you know, the hip hop in China, it's, you know, like a guy. You see, the, I didn't give the, oh, the example, yes, the guy at the beginning, he like, Tian Gan, Wu Zhao, Xiao Xing, Huo Zhu, and from Sichuan. He, he's very interesting. When you watch the video online, the early period, before he's in the mainstream, before he become the winner of the rap of China, he's really like a gangster, like so naked and I mean, the, without any top on that, 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 that sort of thing, like a woman, drug, and the sex, and uh, if I hit someone, of course I don't pay, why I should pay, you know, that sort of, like, but uh, really when you are online mainstream media, that's another phase. He, he show how he can combine the, the Chinese Asian the culture into the rap and the, how the beauty of the, their local language with the culture or even that kind of gangster culture but it, he connected that into the Chinese famous novel also related, related topic. I mean, a kind of shift is they are so good at shift like naturally from one to another because they have different skill. It only depends on what kind of situation he knew need to use this skill or use another skill. So it, a lot, lots, 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 lots of that kind of example. And, uh, but some people, I feel they are quite red, to be honest. And some people, they never read. But some people, they can both. Yeah. So my, my hunch would be that there would be an underground scene that would say, oh, those, these people on TV are sellouts. They're capitalists. Uh, mm -hmm. Capitalists, and we're the real mm -hmm. hip-hop heads. Like, that tends to be a, a hip-hop ideology. Yeah, the, the, the problem is like, I think next time we, we, if I, we only watch TV, that's always only can see one kind of lens. But if you go to the underground the pub or the bar, they are in the battle, then you probably can record a lot <coughs> that need a scholar actually do the field work in hip hop. But for me, from the mainstream, you know, it's very limited. I will see that's the, the, the one side of, of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, spend some money, send someone to, to the like Chongqing, the boss, and uh, see what, what they are doing, you know. Yeah, so I hand to your first, and then we'll go to you. Yeah? Yeah, please. Okay, so um, I have, I have um, one question. It's about the stereotype. It's more like, um, you know, uh, we all know that rap, this kind of culture, comes from America, and it um, actually, like, based on the American culture, and um, in my... Uh, in my very poor knowledge, I uh, I always feel like the traditional or the old school American uh, rap. It's they have a lot of um, uh, uh, they have a lot of word which is like um, about poison, not poison, uh, but drug and um, smoke or, or or violence or sexual all kind of this kind of um, uh, thing. But when it comes to the Chinese media, and it suddenly become very um, good and, <laughs> and and very hard to say that. Yeah. Uh, so the audience in China, I was wondering, do do they have this kind of stereotype? Like, um, they think rap music should be very violent or something, and are they happy to um, accept this kind of um, or or what I, or what we can see there? Um, own uh, region in chi China, uh, ch uh, Chinese culture's rap. I think people are not that naive as you imagined, to be honest. Like, they know what happened. Of course, they couldn't always access that. 
And in China, we know the band from the YouTube, band from the Google, right? Band from Facebook. But lots of people actually can can do that. They just use kind of more apps or VPN to 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 jump that. And uh, but some people, if they want to believe, you always actively intentionally to search for the thing they like. And especially the social media now, they are so smart. Once you searching. Uh, watch one kind of, then immediately the computer will send you lots and lots with similar similar kind of contact. So, you know, I don't know who feed who, you know, or which one feed which one, or which one come first. But, uh, you know, that's their personal choice. I think the more choice is more freedom. And once people have practice in freedom in something, then they are ready for get a freedom idea to something else. I mean, so it's always something, some progress. I think that's some progress. Yeah. Yes, uh, please. Uh, first of all, I found really interesting uh, Thank the presentation. Uh, it opened the world that I didn't know. So I, uh, I lived, as you know, in China for two years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not an expert in hip hop, rap, and trap. But um, what I learned about it was during my experience as a teacher in middle school. So the first uh, question is about the audience. Yeah. Uh, at least I can make a comparison with the talent situation. So, uh, at least in Italy, this kind of music, especially trap, is the music of the teenagers. So the audience is uh, mainly 90% um, teenagers. Uh, you can hear this music in middle school. Yeah. Thought. So I think maybe the, the question is, the audience in China is the same or older? Yeah. I think hip-hop, the audience won't be too young. I mean, for the majority of people, because when child policy, the, parent, the, the kids in this age are watched carefully by their parents, having I mean, four eyes or eight eyes <coughs> or 16 eyes watching, watching them. But for some, some family, of course, they seems like some uh, family, like Margaret Walker, the kids left home at themselves with all the grandparents. Of course, they got a bit more freedom. But generally speaking, they're much older than that. And also, because I'm also thinking about like young kids, because like you find uh, hip hop. I want my older son to learn hip hop, but I just couldn't find like when I like, could fuck, fuck, like my older son immediately, my, my school, not, not, uh, that allowed me to see that. So, I know the, the situation. I don't know what's the age they make that kind of tradition suddenly from this restrict gender to the freedom. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah. yeah. But the second question is were about the um, narrative because um, compared with the Italian trap, um, the musical uh, structure and harmony and rhythm is similar, I would say. And I think the narrative maybe is different in terms of the message um, they want to transmit, I think. Um, the narrative is more focused on um, strength as violence, uh, sex, uh, rebellion, and critics to politics, and so on. And that I can find in this kind of and mainly uh, people who are singers in trap in Italy are um, uh, migrants, marginalized people living in suburbs. So the message uh, they say is that if you want to become a powerful man and boss, uh, so you have to take your uh, weapon and money and you get beautiful women, a variety. So the narrative is uh, different from what we have seen now. But uh, in some lyrics, for example, I've seen, for example, a Ferrari <laughs> that caught my attention, or to be a boss. That, but in a, in a how do you say, a good curated way. And um, in the way that maybe for Chinese to say, I'm the best, I'm, I'm the boss, it's American style, it's like uh, trivial. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, it's possibly. like this. So I just would like to ask you what you think about from this perspective. I don't know. I think they, they attract a variety of their people from different backgrounds. Because hip hop, if you just rapping, 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 you don't need, don't need anything. You just need to practice, right? Mm. But sometimes you will see some good rapper. They had a good kind of device. How much of the spend that kind of electric device to make a kind of good rapper? And some actually really, you see some some people have very very good singing skill. All that kind of training. So it's like already become combined um, synthetic or that very complicated thing all together rather than only rap itself. I think grief can answer your question much better than what I can. But I just say, when you see the rap, rap, let's see what we see a lot, they actually, the rap become parts of the whole thing, right? At least the performance in China, I saw a lot. So that actually ask a lot of the skilled and the training and your understanding on different parts of the thing. So, so from me, from my point of view, I feel they are quite elite. I feel. So I mean, just uh, just different. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think I connect to the elite or edited the the, the hip hop? I don't know, but but it did stick out to me that I was wondering if there was a Chinese word for swag. Yeah, they, they swag a lot. It's like swag, yeah. Yeah, well, because your last, the last presentation that you gave um, maybe five years ago here um, was about how in early Chinese popular music, there, it was never I. It was always we. Um, we this, we that. And then over the course of the 80s and 90s, it became more individualized. And now this is the ultimate. I'm the boss. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I yeah. I think person. people always want to say their boss, but now they have a way to say, you know, they have an opportunity to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's thank Li Juan. This has been so um, fascinating and yeah, yeah. wonderful discussion. Thank you all for your time.